Ich heiße Paige Hamilton. Da, 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 da. Hörst du gern Helmut? It's never been um, motivated by, by you know, uh, fashion, Helmut. It's, it's always been motivated by sort of my love of playing heavy music. And from day one, that's the way it was. And um, uh, it, it, I think if you keep, if you maintain that, you know, th th that, that attitude and that path, then you're always going to be fine as a musician, you know. The minute you're concerned with the sort of fashion trends or what's going on around you stylistically, then you're probably going to be be done, you know, and, and I, uh, I, I, there are times when I'm exhausted and I feel like I don't want to do it anymore, you know, because uh, it's, it's very exhausting touring. I'll have a month away from it and think, I can get used to just being home, you know, um, and then I go play and I go, oh yeah, that's right, I, I love doing this, so I, I, I'm going to do it as long as I'm physically capable, you know. I lived in Germany as a student in, in Stuttgart and um, uh, I, I had a friend who was obsessed with Nick Cave and Nick Cave lived in Berlin and there was that Wim Wenders film Wings of Desire that the Bad Seeds were in and um, she was just, she was always asking me to say, tell, say stuff to her in German or you know, asking me this or that and she was said jokingly you should call the band Helmut and, uh, and I, I thought it was hilarious and I was just like the light bulb finally went off and I was like Helmut. It's good. It's a good. It's a good word. It represents the music. The helmet is this odd kind of entity that straddles, you know, several genres. I mean, we played on the Warped tour. There's the, the Wild Dogs are roaming here in the abandoned mall. Um, that we played on the Warped tour with the, the kind of that emo punk rock contingent of Anti Flag and Thursday and um, uh, Rise Against and those bands. And we played. The year before that, on a metal, the metal festivals, Rakham Ring um, and Rakham Park, with with Molly Crew and Maiden and uh, I don't even remember who else, um, and, and Slayer. So it's you know, and we've played you know in our early days with the you know the Amrap bands or Touch and Go bands or Sub Pop bands, you know, with Nirvana to the Jesus Lizard and the Melvins, and so it's kind of you know, I, I don't. I, I love metal. I love some metal music, just like I love some, you know, you know pop music. And it's not, I'm, I don't have anything against, but for, to call Helmet a metal band, I never really understood that. There is metal, there's a bit of a metal attitude in there, you know, but it's also kind of, I have weird chords, you know, major seven sharp 11 chords with no thirds and things that are not very heavy metal-esque, you know. I don't play a lot of scales. I've learned scales and I know scales, but I use, utilize, you know, uh, whole tone diminished and altered dominant scales as opposed to maybe major and minor, you know. It's, and it's like, I mean, it's all in there. It's all the same 12, 12 notes at the end of the day. It's just a matter of how you, where you're coming from, what you hear and how you try to express yourself. And I, I try to encourage young musicians to listen to, listen to music and listen when you're writing, you know, listen to the players you're playing with listen when you're writing right away from your instrument, not just play riffage. You know, the riff can develop into something. It's a motif, you know, a two-note motif. And I've used the example that every musician should use a million times, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony is the best heavy metal riff ever. So when somebody writes something better than that, I'll let, you know, I'll let the world know. I'll tell everybody, hey, that's better than Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. It ain't never gonna happen. <laughs> if I get disheartened from time to time about the state of the music business, that's that, you know, I think that's normal and natural, but, but, but as I said before, if the music isn't your main motivation for, for doing it, if love of playing music isn't your main motivation, then you're going you're gonna to probably want to quit. And, and so, I mean, to have other musicians say that they're inspired by or influenced by you is, a, is, a, is flattering, you know. The average rock fan is not a fan of, of, of you know, the, a band because of their musicianship or because of their not even musicianship in the way that, that the world at large thinks of musicianship, because I don't think you know technique is 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 only a means to. I only I think technique is a means to an end. Many people are impressed by technique, so they think King Crimson is amazing because they play in odd time signatures. That's that's cool. That's all fine. But to me, there's something that, that about musical soul that a band like AC/DC could reinvent the blues essentially and be amazing because they have their their own. Uh, you know, their own sound, their own, their own vibe. It's always kind of been a problem, or, or sort of in my lifetime, in pop or rock music, that people cop other styles and, and um, uh, sort of regurgitate a lot of stuff that's been done. I think that, you know, if you, if you, uh, 
if you can ad uh, insert some of yourself in there and, and adapt, you know, so somebody's style or several styles, and, you know, and turn it into your own, you know, musical voice, your own, build your own vocabulary out of it. It's interesting. A lot of guys want to be rock stars. I mean, Fred Durst came straight out and said he wants to be a rock star. He loves being a star. He loves being a celebrity. It's like, God bless him. Good for him. That, that, that only goes you know, this far. And, and being a musician well, is something that carries you over the course of your entire lifetime. It's something that you can never tap fully. You'll never master music. You might be, you know, improve on a day-to-day, -day, week-to-week, year-to-year basis. And that's, that, to me, is a, is a great life path. It's been what my, my path to, to work at music every day. And I'm, I'm inspired by Bob Marley and Wes Montgomery and Bartok and Beethoven and you know, Fugazi and Gang of Four and Killing Joke and Wire and, you know, on and on and on. There are all these, you know, there's great rock music, jazz and classical music and reggae and funk and, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? It, so it's not j genre dr driven. I don't care to be in the club that wears tight pants and floppy haircuts or I don't care to be in the club that, that compares their tattoos or in the club that has, you know, pierced dicks or whatever. I, you know, it just doesn't interest me. Music interests me. I was determined to be the anti-songwriter in the in the late 80s when I started the band and so I was all visual images and collages like E.E. E. Cummings poems. I mean I was literally putting lines on the floor on pieces of paper and you know like he supposedly did and I got that from Robert Poss and Band of Susans and and I thought like you can have a collection of images that are very you know and you, you you have an image of something and 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 it's a it's you know when you're writing it when you read a book, you know you have an image. The difference now is that people make videos, and so this, they have they have the story and the video and the lyrics. And are people not clever enough to sort of use their imagination? And, you know, that's I I, I think um, uh, that you know that t to me was always kind of kind of you know interesting. You know, to, to like part of being a part of why I like the, the helmet thing is it's a, it, it allows me to write lyrics and sing as well. If you develop your own style, you know, lyrically and musically, you know, and you're, you're going to be influenced by, by movies and by, you know, uh, by books and by relationships and by, you know, the people that you're, are your friends. And, and for me, writing for film, it forced me to take it away from my own personal experiences because I was, I was writing about this character's personal experiences. And you had to have, the character might have three moods, sad, goofy, and pissed off. So, so you have his, a theme that might represent him and you have to put that in these different contexts and make it work in the course of the film. And, and uh, that's when you're writing specifically music for a film or if you're performing on a bigger score, well, there's music already there. There's a composer and a director that have an idea and you're contributing. They're saying, this truck's gonna crash into that big cement railing there. Can you make screeching noises? And that's just all about sound effects. And that's a whole other thing that's influenced my play, is playing is to be, is the, you know, the, that, that's a lot of fun. You know, yeah, I can make a shit ton of noise and, it's, and, and get paid well for it. It's really good, you know. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs>
you know, who's in a third generation AMREP band, and AMREP's the label that Helmet, you know, the house that Helmet built, as they refer to it, and it's like, he, and his, his older brother is in a third generation AMREP band, so what that makes him, like, you know, eight years old when we put out Strap It On or whatever, and he's like, yeah, dude, I thought he's, a, and he's, he's correcting me on my own song, so it's a little, it's a little disconcerting, but uh, it's also, it's also awesome, it's great, you know, and, and they've sort of, they, you know, uh, there's a, there's a, um, an injection of fresh energy into the into the music, and I, I'm, you know, um, to be honest with you, at the end of in 1997, at the end of our run there, I mean, our bass player was over it, and he was a he was a pain in the ass, and he was miserable, and and didn't want to be there, and I don't want to play with people that don't want to be there. It's like I don't want to do anybody any favor, you know, them to have be doing me any favors by playing with me because they feel like they have to, and he didn't want to do it anymore. So God bless him, he's a great musician. You know, but he he wanted to do something else, and so he so he moved on. And then our drummer decided he wanted to move on as well. And I don't, I I, I don't begrudge those guys. They they essentially though they the band that I started and that was my living. They pulled the rug out from under me, and then they then they didn't then they hated me for it. And I couldn't quite figure that one out. But whatever, uh, I I want I want to play with people that want to be there, and these guys want to be there. You know, and they're great great musicians, all three of them. Politics are politics. It's, no, my views never change, but I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that at least the United States will be represented by someone that we can be proud of. You know, he's intelligent and, and uh, well-spoken, and um, uh, you know, I, I voted for him, so I hope he does a good job. But you know, you never know. It's a tough situation, you know, that he's coming into. And there's there are a lot of things that. That uh, you know, the, this, the the former president uh, uh, assumed a lot of power, um, and uh, did a lot of things that so overstepped the office. And and I think I, the reason I'm excited about this guy is that I think he's his he's uh, he wants to trim that power back a little bit, and you know, have it. It's it's supposed to be a democracy, you know, not an autocracy. So we'll uh, we'll see. I've never been interested in being eclectic in that sense. I, say, I keep my genres very separate and pure in a weird way. I listen to classical music. I don't like jazzical. You know, I listen to, to rock music. I don't necessarily, you know, there's fu fusion w music was good for a, a period there around Bitches Brew and Weather Report and all that stuff. And then it turned into light jazz. So like it's dangerous trying to I, I, I be too eclectic. First of all, it's dangerous to try to show off and show your 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 ability your knowledge by by smashing genres together it's 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 f great to listen to all styles of music you know i'm not i'm not uh, so limited that i can only listen to rock music in order to play rock music i love jazz music and i love rock music i don't try to incorporate because what i was what i've been talking about is theme it's, mu it's still the same 12 notes in western music that we're talking about here that that we're all using and so it's a matter of, of listening to the, where the music's coming from. I could write a helmet riff into a, I could turn it into a classical string quartet. I could write a classical string quartet and turn it into a helmet song because it's going to come from the smallest musical element that you then develop. And that's a, that's a you know, melodic rhythmic motif, a riff in, in the case of helmet. You know, ba da da da, ba. The answer is da 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 da. You know, and you could do that, and in, in, you could do that with a hundred-piece orchestra or a string quartet, or you know. And, and I think that's like people. T I think people are grasping, you know, a little bit. It's it's it, it's it's straws trying to to put things together to create some new form. It's I, 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 the drum and bass jazz thing kind of works with Eamon Tobin and and Cujo, that stuff that he does. I love that stuff, and he takes jazz samples, and that that works. It's kind of taken beats, so that kind of that's a genre that was created by putting, you know, program beats with something. But it's they, it's organic. I think the main thing that I can say that I'm proud of is that it's always come from an honest place. It's not about trying to impress any any particular uh, a group of people. 
you know what I mean? Whether our, our peers were, were you, you know, rat at rat our life skull and sonic youth, or then later the unsane and surgery and, you know, these New York bands that were, that were around, or th then like, you know, meeting everyone from David Bowie to Gene Simmons, or I was never, I was never doing it for, for anybody, any, any other reason, any reason other than love of this, of, of this heavy music that kind of combined with this, noisy music and it was just uh, this 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 thing that that we were fortunate to to sort of stumble upon and 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 that um and it's a it comes from a musical place and an honest place that we weren't sitting around in lab coats kind of trying to formulate what our next move was going to be and a lot of bands do that even so-called punk rock indie rock bands you know and i think that's just bogus